is a word of life with the Lord's General, Prophet John Anoche. Word of Life broadcast with Prophet John Anoche is made possible by partners of John Anoche Ministries. Light the world with the word of life. Is a word of life with the Lord's general, Prophet John Anoche. I, I want to share with you something for our glory. Remember last week I talked about we being glorified, the last evening of the program. But one of the things you have to understand is that the glory of God comes through his church in the book of Ephesians chapter 3 verse 20. Ephesians chapter 3 verse 20 to 21. The Bible says, now to him who is able to do exceedingly abundantly above all that we ask or think according to the power that works in us so there is a power that works in us and then he says to him be glory in the church by jesus christ to him be glory in the church so he's ascribing the glory of god unto the church to the lord jesus be glory in the church okay so he's ascribing the glory unto God that Jesus is glorified but in the church. So to him Jesus, to him be glory in the church. So Jesus is glorified in the church. Who is able to do exceedingly abundantly above what we can even think or ask. The Lord says to him be that glory because he does exceeding things abundant things amongst us so that the glory be unto him so when we praise that glory of praise is unto him hmm. as for us who will praise Jesus it will be by clapping shouting shouting his name glory be to Jesus the result of that praise whether it goes to heaven by fire smokes incense like the Lord has said is unto the Lord Jesus. So to him be glory in the church. So the church should be involved in things that glorifies the Lord. So when we are coming to church, our attitude should be in glory. People must see us and see the glory of Jesus and ascribe that to him. The way our formation is, the way our disciplines are, the way we conduct ourselves, the, the manner with which we do our things, the excellencies of things, accurately arrangement of things, setting things in order, administrations, protocols, our dressings, our mannerisms, our moral purity, our interruptions, our relationships, the way we conduct our things must bring glory to him. The love of Jesus in our heart. The love of Christ in our heart. It must show forth a praise in glory to him. So he says, now to him who is able to do. So as for him, his functionality is able to do exceedingly abundantly above so Jesus that we serve he is his speciality is doing things that are abundantly above he is able if you are an accountant here and we bring an accounting figures and all of that and money issues and all of us who are you know social 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 studies and psychology and you know law and all those things are those people who read and then we bring figures and all of that we've gone to cut deals but when we come is the accountant that must sit down and tell you your profit margin if you are not careful you can cut a deal when you come taxes will eat all your margin so you will not get some so when you are going to do this he must handle the figures and advise you that this will be the best niche for you so make sure that you niche your dividend at this particular word peg it here so they must speak the finance expert must look into papers and 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 the accounts must look into documents and books and read the books 
That is why they are the ones who sanctify the books. You may be a businessman and then you just do your things, you know, haphazardly. But it is the accountant who must come and cleanse the book. They must purify the book. They must sanctify it. Set it apart. Consecrate the book for sanctification. They must sanitize the book. Make sure there's sanity in the book. Order. Otherwise, when the tax man comes, you are in trouble. Maybe there's something you recorded at profit. It was supposed to be cost. It will be added for your what? Your tax system. And when they calculate everything and say, pay your head. You'll be in trouble. Why? Because you did not sanctify the book. Sometimes to get an account and pay them, sometimes we think it is an, you know, some Herculean task. No, no, it is rather going to help you because you have been losing money you don't even understand. Keep record so that you don't put all your energy burdens on the accounts. On the money. Because there are people, the moment they get their first income, they, are, they have energy within themselves. And they put all the energy upon that money, that account. My hair must come from it. My this must come. No. No. Treat the business as an entity. It will grow. Are we together? Yes. Many of you, you'll be sent out for ministry works and all of that. Be careful the way you do your things. People have told the same line and they failed. Because the way and manner prophets, some of the prophet leaves, because they don't want any advice. Sometimes they don't live long. Sometimes they don't last, even in ministry. You just check and see. But you see the pastors, teachers, those people, they live long. They live long. They establish the structures. Prophet, buga buga, gidi gidi gem buying. So sometimes when people enter this as well, this prophet is not like that. In natural fact, there is a part of the prophetic that must be opened, which is like this. When you went to Samuel's house, everything in Samuel's house was in order. Samuel had a place called the high place. Check the Bible. And if you came to Samuel and you were, you know, he had counselors who sat with him at the high place to eat. He had people who cook food. He had company of young prophets who were sons of the prophet and they were stationed at the mountains when they were coming they came with an entourage of the spirit so when you entered into that arena which prophetic arena was you know deduced from you became another man they had that prophetic aura so he actually positioned everything it is administrating the prophetic to make meaning to the people. So it wasn't like anybody at all could just go there. Remember, the institution, they had taught the people so much that they knew that you don't go to a prophet's altar or appear before his chamber empty-handed. So the Saul and his, his servant asked, what do we have to give to the prophet? Because we can't go to the prophet empty-handed. That means there were processes you went through. Nobody was going to charge you anything. That was not the case. But there were processes there were people, so you see when they were showing them their way, there was a clear-cut way to the place. They are prophet these days, they are in some kind of hideout, some bush corner. So you pass back, drop, there, there's no, you know, signpost, Domiabra. No clear-cut directions. So it's only the numbers. Fremix, you see, Natasha. So you have to administrate things. If God has given you grace, the Spirit of God is inside of you. He has to put things in order for you. You know, one of the offices of the ministry is also administration. It's part of it. So God gives gifts of administrations. Many people have such gifts. So as we pray and train people, you identify them by the Spirit of God and then train them in the way of the Lord and then they fix themselves. So they've gone to school for it, but there's a gift also they have. That must come out so that when they are applying account to God's money, this is how God's money must be managed so they can understand it. So it's a work in progress. And you must discipline yourself as a man of God to do that. A lot of people, I'm the man of God, so their budget is huge because 
Yes? You are the public figure. Everybody looks at you. So you must dress well and all of that. But you see, there are, there are better ways of doing things. You don't have to inflict your budget upon the budget of the ministry. Otherwise, the ministry won't grow. The ministry will be competing with your own. I'm telling you this. And this is a free knowledge for everybody. So, every day, your budget is 1,000. And the entire ministry budget is 500. And when they get 800, they must give you your 1,000 before they take their 500. So, every day, the ministry is in a fix. The pastors are not growing. Because when somebody's school fees is dead, they, they can't pay. So every time they are grieving, they are, they are praying, but they are grieving. So it is affecting things in the ministry. Listen, one of the things you need to learn is ministry. A lot of people think that when you are caught, it takes many, many, many years before God can make you great. No. Greatness is attached to names. So, names is also of a reputation, dignity, and glory. So, if you are, even at the early stages, but you dignify yourself, you allow the Holy Spirit to dignify you. You keep yourself out of corruption, all forms of corruption. And you let the Spirit of God discipline you. You respect elders. You, you respect your father, your mother. You respect each other. You teach the word of God accurately. You don't come to stand here and then teach the, somebody that you quarrel with. But you are full of the word. And then you pray for the people. You spend time. The people's issues are on your heart. The Lord begins to what? position you. He begins to spread you. There's a divine aura. Angels are multiplied on you. But if you begin to just mess up your things, there will be a day you will see other people coming and you will feel that you have not done enough even though you have been given so many years and you might begin to compete with them to put them down. That's what many people are doing. So, there's one of the gifts of God that God gives to us. It's called the gift of ministry. The gift of ministry. A lot of folks don't know this. But there is a gift of teaching. There is a gift of preaching. There is a gift of exhortation. Exhortation. Uh, we have exhortation and we have exhortation. Hortation. So we have the gift of exhortation too. Okay? Not the exhortation as a promotion and elevation and all of that. In the book of Romans chapter 12, verse 6, it says, Having then gifts deferring according to the grace that is given unto us so the gift is given to according to the grace so if the grace is to play piano the giftings will be the skill that has been given to understand the versions of the piano this piano how many versions do we have we have like five of them five of them so somebody may have a gift to operate only one there are people who can only operate one but somebody you have do you have, you have, can you operate all? Yes. So he has been given gift to, to operate all. The gift in him becomes the skill of God in him by the Spirit to operate all. But there are those who can operate one. They've been given the gift area. No matter what they will do. If they want to operate two, they must get someone who has all or the second one and submit their heart and their ministry to them so that they can have it. Not going to submit to them as a father figure necessarily, but submitting to yourselves. That means I recognize that this my brother has a grace upon his life. And the gift can do this work. Me, I have my grace. My grace is to only operate on the speaker. But I need to also play piano. It's another person's grace. So I go there. Within the grace, he has giftings. So I see that there's this one particular gift. I have it. He also has it. But the others he has, I don't have. Maybe administration and this. So I go to him. And then I submit my heart. My brother, I respect the grace upon you. You are a colleague man of God. You may be even be older than him in age, but age is not translated into the spirit. So, my brother, I respect the grace upon you. In fact, I salute your grace. I want to learn. How do you do it? 
but, but by the way, please, I have a small gift to impart your ministry. So the ministry with which you are getting the gift from, you have imparted it. Spiritually, God has permitted it. Physically, even if he doesn't want to, he will have a vision and then he will release it. He will just teach you that. This is what this is it. The moment you start practicing, his spirit will start feeding you. When you get it, that's it. This is what the Lord has given us. This is what the Lord has given us. And that is what brings humility. Rather than standing on the pulpit and putting somebody down, every gate you are following, you don't know this. No, you don't do that. If you don't have, it doesn't mean God is not well, having it. The Bible says God has all of it. And he's liberal in giving. So if you don't have that gift area, it doesn't cease God from operating with other people. Stop putting other people down. There are those who are actually every day learning how to put people's gift down. So your gift is nothing. Your this in, no, it's something. Because every man needs gift to serve the Lord. Even eternal gift is a gift. So if it is nothing, then it means that you are insulting Jesus. He said, when I'm lifted, I will give gift unto men. That is the gift of the fivefold ministries he has given. This is different from the gift supplied by the Holy Ghost unto the church. For effectiveness of the church. So hear this. For the gift of Jesus unto the church is when we have the book of Ephesians chapter 4 verse and number 11, 10, 11, 12. Where he talks about some apostles, some prophets, some teachers, some evangelists, some you know, pastors and all of that. For the perfecting of the saints, for the equipping of the saints. For the work of ministry. But this the work of ministry so that we can understand how ministry is done. How we play piano in ministry. There are a lot of people who know to play piano, but they can't play for ministry. There are people who are specialized playing for ministry. There are people who can play drums. But when they come, the only drums they will play is rakata kata. There must be some weed somewhere before they can play. That is not what we need. Here we need different things. So there are so many people who can do graphics. They can do editing. They can do things. But it's not for church. It's not for spiritual issue. So many people can do administration, but not, they don't have the gift of, you know, of the Holy Spirit for church. So when God gives us those things, then we train you to be effective in the environment of God. That's all. So that is what the Lord says for the perfecting of the same. For the edifying of the body. But he talks about equipping the saints for the work of the ministry. So it is ministry, meaning service of God to the people. That means we must learn how to serve of the people. Many people don't know that when you are appointed to serve in the church, and members and people are coming, somebody might get you angry. If you are serving, you don't flare up. It's a principle. If you flare up, we must remove you and bring another person. You know it's a principle. That when you are ministering, you don't flare up. You don't. You are serving the Lord. You are actually standing in the stead of Jesus and serving his people. Then somebody causes you to be angry. You need to take time and explain. Then you bore. Basama. No, you don't do that. You don't know how to serve God. Because you serve God by serving his people. And sometimes God can let somebody test you. And he's watching. Angels are reporting things too. Everything we do in the house of God, they report and take it. So every little thing you bought, yeah, pata or baby and pata. One of Seven degree madness. Talking. Because you are serving. You are serving. There are people when they get angry, the alarm shake. They shake. People might think it's an anointing. It's not anointing. Amen. It's not anointing. So we need to understand these things. So the Bible says here, once we have given different, you know, to the grace, according to the grace given unto us, let us use them. Let us use them. There are a lot of people with gifts unused. Let us use them. Okay? If prophecy, let us prophesy in proportion to our faith. So the fact that somebody is able to prophesy about the Nigerian election and you don't have the grace to prophesy about Nigerian election, you can tell them to shut up. Hey, I saw people that he says, God has not spoken to me, so everybody should shut up. Hey, it doesn't matter how great you may be on earth. 
God is God. See, we have a lot of immature people handling things for God. And that's why we see all these things. Because they are the ones who are passing information onto us. And it's so immature. Immaturity everywhere. So, and they are the ones teaching us, praying for So, So, they've taught us over the years to be like this. They say the envy is too much. Too much. It's too much. We don't learn to forgive. The love of Jesus is not there. People who will offend us. I've always taught you something. That if you go to catch a fish and put all of them in a basket, you have a great catch. Then you go, you want to eat the fish. You want to use them for something better. To serve your visitors. Do you tell the fishes? My friend, throw, scrape off all the scales and the fins and all of that. Work on yourself. Do you tell the fishes to do that? The same way we've gone to bring souls unto the church. We don't tell them, mature yourself. No. We spend time on you. We cut this off. Cut this off. Bring this on you. Oil you. Spices. These are the process of things. This is the way we do things. So it is not everybody that is at the same standard. So we must deal with people differently. And we must develop their heart, their inner tenacity to do it. We must do that. And we must not also condemn ourselves all the time. No. We don't, do ha- we don't have to do that. We must take time for people. If you look at somebody like me, and Jesus has been able to bring me to this level, would you clap for Jesus or you clap for me? You clap for Jesus. Do you know why? You give him applause because he has done well. This guy here, my dad will tell you, nobody can preach to me or convince me to come to Christ. I knew Jesus only. So as you are coming, I have the scriptures. If I when he's preaching, I'm paying attention. I check every scripture word for word, you know, for argument. So that when somebody is coming to preach, I have a Bible. My Bible is bigger than yours. And he gave me the Bible. I told him that my father is a professor of Bible. I, he gave me the Bible. In school, nobody was able to. You can't convince me, my friend. I'm born again already. I was, my date for bo- being born again is there. I was born again 2203. I was repeatedly born again 205. <laughs> when I became first born again 203. 205, another man of God came to preach and he mentioned some things. You may not fornicate, you may not do this, you may not steal, but you fight with this, you know, you do this, you do that, you know. Because me, when my mom cooks and he cooks and he wants to serve, I will tell her, don't serve me. Serve yourself. Because what you are going to give me, I will not agree. I compare with my little siblings. And me, I'm the boss. Amen? You give me this meat. Once you give them this, if you give them two, I must have four. Because my age is different. This mindset. And you know, the man preached about all these things. And I came to be born again. Again. <laughs> Daddy, do you remember? And you know, I used to put some bees on my hands, if you remember. He talked about them too. So I removed the bees and came to stand there. Later on, I found out that Jesus, because the Holy Ghost was, there was nothing wrong with this. I was convicted that the bees I put on my hand is sin. Jesus doesn't like, I will not go to heaven. And I came to be born again, again. So I remember it was so critical to me and I dated them. So I remember that. (laughs) So I remember that when I started having interaction with Jesus, I asked him, which date was I born again? <laughs> that is on record. I remember asking him that. He smiled. <laughs> he thought that this guy, you are crazy. This one too. <laughs> I hope you understand. Very critical. He's done a work on me. My father is a giver, so naturally, like I was a giver. A preacher is preaching, and we are going for visa. You are preaching at dawn, disturbing. Me concentrate, me do a brony beside my sister, and I make a chair. And so, yeah, brother, God will give you what? I find something, I give you. 
Shut up. Me, 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 me father will preach me to you. You see the kind of heart. But all these things were dead long ago. It died. Sometimes if you are closer to me, you wonder, ah, why is you, are you listening to these other men of God here like you are listening to their preaching? Because in the past, I was busy. I'm reading. I'm studying. But now, I find time to also listen to others. I listen. I'll be watching you. I watch. I'll be watching. And I'm not critical about it. I'm watching everybody and their revelation. And I have that heart to contain it. So when somebody is talking, I say, listen, you need to get to a level. Yeah, I'm not listening to You need to get to a level and be tolerant with people and listen to others as well. There may be one thing they will say that you learn from. We don't want people to know we learn from each other. No. Because God has given people graces. Gift, 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 gift. Even sometimes one gift, maybe the gift of teaching, somebody's dimension teaching is different. If you know me, my teaching, I can teach you a lot of things. But there's one thing that if you really, really humble your heart, you can be raised up because I have spiritual teaching. How? It's like I know the road to things. But that thing, eh, you need to have a heart for it. That is the development phase. That's what I've realized. Because for that spirit to be well up in me, I need that kind of discipline constantly before. Otherwise, it doesn't even come. I may try, but it will not work. I know the grace. I know how it functions. Because it's lived with me. It's now spirit in me. It's no longer just a gift, but it's a spirit. So when I stand, it comes like a stream of living water. So I don't need to look into anything, but I can be teaching people lines to travel. It requires full obedience. You will go. So you see, we need to understand these things. That there's a gift of ministry that God has given. If you read this carefully, you will see it. It says, prophesy in proportion to our faith. Or ministry, seventh verse. It says, or ministry. Ministry becomes a gift that, es that establishes a grace upon someone. So there are people with the grace of ministry, such as I have. So if you want to know how ministry is done, people can come to me. And I can tell you and tell you that this is not part of your ministry. That is why this is happening. So put this thing there. This will happen. So you begin to unleash all the skill about those things, which you have actually what? You know, you held on until now. That is what it is. So there's ministry. Let's use it in our ministering. Meaning service unto the people. He who teaches in teaching. He who exalts in exhortation. Exhortation. He who gives with liberality. So there are people with gifts of giving. If every Sunday you come to church or any other day week you come to church and you don't give above that particular measure, you give like every other, but then your gift is not in use. Use it. You have a gift of giving. Every time you must be given. You must give it, be given. And you must convince people around you that this is my gift. My father, you know, I've seen his son. Some of his sons have those gifts. Give it. And I've seen how rich some of them became. And they are still, you know. I, I, you know, I've seen it. I learned a lot of things from him like that. Closely and from afar. I watch things, pray about things. Sometimes some of these sons of his will call him and then he'll tell me, he will tell me, he will call me and tell me, um, I've instructed this one to come and see you. Thank you. I have a vision about any of his sons, I'll call him. You know, your grace, the, this is what I'm seeing. And then, he will tell the people that their sons. I will not directly go to his son. Never, never, never. If you want to, you, you, you can prophesy. Imagine going to Jesus' home to prophesy. Hey, now also they owe your prophet power. So they are custodians. We don't, do you understand? They give permissions. So he, he talks about it. He who leads. So leadership is a gift. 
but there are people also who have studied leadership. Leadership is a gift. There are people who are not leaders because they can't organize. In fact, they themselves, they are not organized. So if you give them to organize anything, they can't. But everybody has the right to lead. But the one who has been raised in leading, their people is a gift for them. So they're always reading about leadership. Leadership. They like leadership. They take leadership. It's in them, so they want to. They are those that are not leaders, but they want to. So they learn from leaders, serve, and get impact. Are you hearing me? They are those that are gig, 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 gig. Everything. They are people who talk and they don't censor their talk. If you put them in leadership role now, they will scatter everybody just by their words. But you need to be training them to exercise decorum at all levels so they don't talk anyhow. They think they are freeing their minds, but they are offending people too. Not all men have it. So there must be the way to talk. If you are a leader in the church, it's different from being a leader in the marketplace. It's different from being a leader in any other business field. You are a leader over God's people. God's anointed, they have the Holy Ghost in them. When they start talking against you, you will shrink. Especially you don't have, God doesn't defend you on that note because you always offend. There are those who have callings. But they are never disciplined with their they are never disciplined with their anger problems. Little thing, I'm angry, I'm leaving. No. You want to be yourself, but not the work of Jesus. You cannot do it. Unless you are willing to trade it, give that anger issue to him and take his heart. Every shepherd must have a shepherd's heart. So they are prophet, they want to set up churches and run churches. Yet they don't have shepherd's hearts. And they are not training their hearts to be shepherds. How do you handle people? You will use the lion characteristics to bring them in. And use the same lion characteristics to scatter them. You scatter them. No love. No peace, no unity. No proper resolution of conflicts. You don't respect administrations. Mostly such people, they do things anyhow. So the real prosperity, they can't handle it. So the gift of prosperity and the grace of prosperity and the spirit of prosperity won't come to them. It won't come to them. You can look at them by the way they dress. The shoe, one is polished, one is dirty. You can see a lot of mismatch. Imbalance work within. I'm telling you. You know, there are a lot of people, they have a gift, they say, I don't need any administration. And yet you want your ministry to be a functional ministry like something, somebody else. It won't work. You have to actually submit to that. If my office, personally, there's nothing that I need that the ministry will give me. If I tell the, the council, I need a car, they might go, they might try and save and buy for me, but I won't do that. Even if they try, I will stop them. I can buy my own car. Except you individually want to buy a car and dash me. That one is a blessing that you want to tap. But if the church wants to do that, I will stop them. Unless the church says, we are buying a car for the office of the prophet so that when he's traveling across country, he can use. Now, I'm not traveling across country. If you buy that car, it's a waste. So when you put it before me, I will advise the council. It's a good thought, but wait until you get there before. It's the property of the church. But wait. Are you hearing my point now? Yes. There are those we send out, like apostle, we send him out to places. He go and meet this person, go and meet this judge, go and meet this, you know, this. We are registering this year. He, he's the executive pastor. He must be in a very car team. Oh, or banner, but team team. Now, 
to represent the ministry. So worldwide word, you know, that's your pastor. Amen. I don't go anywhere. They are the ones who go and represent me in several places. So they must get those things. If I start to do that, and I want to, I will do it myself. That's all. So sometimes somebody doesn't understand, want to fight. Don't fight. I have a deeper understanding for doing things. And I don't suppress the council. No. Even sometimes when I'm doing something, I don't go direct to the ministry that I want this money for this. No, 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 no. I will do things outside and get it done. That's what I do. I don't go to the ministry like, hey, ministry. No, I don't have such. That power, if I decide to use it, Jesus will now, he will tell me, prepare home, you are coming home. You prepare, you are coming home. Because I can't abuse my power. Because he has, we have set things in place. But taking care of my office, visitors have come, they must drink water, there's this small, small, petty cash issue. The office of the prophet must also, what? Apply through the administrations of the, of the ministry. Because I have PA systems. I have people who are managing the office. They must apply. I have armor bearers. I have people, they must apply. That's how it is. Like any other office apply. For petty cash, for small, small things, maybe. So if you, God has given you grace for ministry. Learn details of things. Learn it. Learn them. Learn them. Learn them. Details of things. I remember when I lifted my hands to pray, the Lord says, these people, I will flood their house with these cars. I'm telling you these things. Amen? Amen. Glory be to Jesus. I'm telling you. I have so many things to do. I don't need to sleep in three cars. A day will come that it will be needful. If right now that we are doing farms, we will need pickups. So this year, it's one of our budget that we have to get pickups so that we can take care of the farms for the church. And personally too, I'm a farmer. So when the need comes, we'll do that. And it's for a project, for a purpose. It's not like for what? Not every man has this wisdom, so I will not insult you, but I won't do it. I won't do it. I won't do that. The word of God must go. People must hear the word. And it takes a lot of resources to do that. We have to pump it in. That is the point. So, if you are a young man, a young woman, and God is giving you ministry, and you'll be posted to places, be wise. There are those that have been posted to people's countries. Then they buy this and showcase. Somebody's country. Envy will set in. They will suck you from there. Ah, you came to our country, you have a mass well. You don't understand. Wisdom is the principal thing. Wisdom is the principal thing. Don't ever use those things as a means or a tool for evangelism. That if I showcase, they will see how blessed I am so that people will come to Christ. No! People have never come to Christ because of that. The power of God is enough! The Bible says the gospel is the power of God unto salvation. Preach it in season and out of season. People will know Jesus for Jesus. How would you preach to a rich man who already has those cars you are trying to showcase? How do you convert such a person? They are rich already. When you get to a poor place, that's where you exhibit your... It's a poverty mentality. I'm telling you the truth. There are a lot of people who want people by those means. And the same people came to collapse them. Be wise. You have your money to spend on yourself. No problem. But must you talk about it? My watch is 
$50,000. Oh, okay. $50,000. That's good. You may be at a place where there's no envy, but there's a place where envy is one of their prime gifts. They have not been totally delivered out of it. They hand you sell 50,000. At that car, they want you to you. Watch. Please, am I talking to people here? Good. Tell your neighbor, be wise. In ministry, God gives wisdom to lead. And if you come to my leadership training school, you will know things. It's in the Bible. But you will be amazed at things that have been decoded. You will know things. Lead well. Everything will be fine. Oh, praise Jesus. Oh, clap your hands. I appreciate Jesus. Right? So, how to build and manifest God. All the things I'm talking about is part of it. How to build and manifest the glory of God. Let me just read this scripture. I will full prove it and I'm done and I'll continue next week. 2 Corinthians chapter 3, verse 18. And I'll, I will connect to a proof test in the book of Colossians 1, 27. And then that's it. The book of 2 Corinthians. 2 Corinthians. Okay? 2 Corinthians chapter number 3, verse 18. The Bible talks about something profound. He says, But we all, with unveiled face, beholding us in a mirror, the glory of the Lord. So Moses veiled his face. He veiled his face. So because he veiled his face, the revelation that he had gotten, he was captured within it. He couldn't get out of that veil. So he couldn't see the rest of the revelations about Christ coming. So he was veiled. But Jesus came and took the veil off because the Bible says in Christ, when you read the law in Christ, the veil is taken away. So if the law is veiled, that is what the law is coded. So the law is coded. The gospel is in the law. The gospel is revealed through the law. Because in the book of Deuteronomy, God told Moses that, listen, this is how, this is how God started revealing Jesus unto the people of the law. Let me just give you a gist of that, okay, quickly. Can I do that? Then I'll come back here and then cut it off in righteousness. Thank you, Father. The book of Deuteronomy, let somebody, let's go there. Thank you, Holy Spirit of God. Somebody lift up your right hand and speak in other tongues. Say, Father, bless my life. Thank you for making me a blessing. In the name of the Lord Jesus. Glory. Are we together here? Somebody, are you blessed? In the book of Deuteronomy chapter 18, the verse number 15, it says, excuse me, the Bible says, the Lord your God, this is God speaking to Moses. And Moses is talking now. The Lord your God will raise up for you a prophet like me from your midst. The reason why he says a prophet like me is because prophets are messengers and they proclaim the word of God. So he was seeing that God is never a human being. And God could not be a human being. In fact, God has spoken to Moses that I am God. I'm not like you. I'm not man. He's spoken to him. So when Moses' eye was open, he was seeing in the future someone doing miracles, signs and wonders. He says, oh, okay, he's a prophet like me. <laughs> but he's all is that every word God wants to speak to the generations he has put in, in that prophet's mouth. Look, listen, listen. When you are reading the, you know, the, the mindset with which you interpret the word of God, using the word of God is important. He says here, the Lord your God will raise up for you a prophet like me from your midst, from your brethren. Him you shall hear. That means not me, Moses, but him you shall hear. So when he comes and says, a greater than Moses is here, clap your hands and celebrate. Why? Because Moses spoke about it. That you must not hear me. Him you shall hear. As for me, even when I'm coming to you, I must veil my face before I can approach you. But him you shall hear. 
according to all you desired of the Lord your God in Horeb. It was Mount Horeb, Mount Sinai. This, you know, the Mount of Sinai, where the presence of God I read in the book of um, Exodus chapter 24, and to you, and then the 24, where he began to receive the pattern of the tabernacle. So he says, I'll raise up a prophet like me. Him you shall hear. He says, according to your desire, because when God descended in glory to Mount Sinai or Mount Horeb, the people demanded that God would speak to them face to face and that they would know God for themselves. And that they didn't want anybody to speak to them. So God said, no problem, I will come to you. So he came himself. When he came and they saw that, mm, God coming in his glory like that is not easy to contain him. So they begged God that God, please. They've spoken to Moses. Moses want to see God ourselves. We want to hear him. Every day you come to us, God spoke to me, God spoke. Now we also want to feel him. We want to see him. We want to experience his voice. And then God's glory came. And then he spoke through the fire. He opened the people of Israel's eyes. They saw him as what? At first they saw him as sapphire stone. Then later they saw him as what? A consuming fire. And then voice of words with swords speaking, trumpets. And they said they quake. And even Moses said, I exceedingly fear. Because you want to see God and experience him the way he speaks to the prophet. It will tend that you will, you will faint. So the people were fainting and said, Oh, please God, don't speak anymore. Now, just talk to Moses like that. It will be good for us. And God says, you have rejected Moses before me. No problem. And then as I'm coming to you, you also say, I cannot come and speak to you because you can't contain my words. Then I'll send you another one. I will come, but when I come, I will come in the body of a man as a lamb and I will speak to you. So hear the reference of God. According to all you desire of the Lord your God in Horeb, in the day of the assembly, saying, God quoted them, let me not hear again the voice of the Lord my God nor let me see this great fire anymore, lest I die. So God was not going to come in the midst of fire anymore. He wasn't going to come and tender anymore. He, he had a better way of coming. Jesus was crucified from the foundations of the world, revealed at the last day. So he says, and the Lord said to me, what they have spoken is good. It falls in line with what I have planned. So hear this. I will raise up for them a prophet. Like you from among their brethren. From Judah. And will put my words in his mouth. So Jesus came to the end. He had a fleshly body. But when he died and resurrected, he doesn't have a fleshly body anymore. He now has a resurrected body, a glorified body. He's now God. He's no longer son of man. He's the son of God. Because the flesh is gone. The spirit, he lives now unto glory. He came 100% man. But God was planted in that body. He said, I will put my word in his mouth. Imagine the whole word in the heaven. All the word that was in God that came to be flesh. He put it in a man. That's what I'm talking about. And then he says what? I'll put my words in his mouth. He shall speak to them all that I command him. And it shall be that whoever, this is one of the things that you have to understand. That if you have requested this, now the word is not to only Israel but he says to all of the world he said whoever whoever will not hear my words which he speaks in my name now it's not which he will speak but he, which he speaks because when he comes he lives forever so he continues to speak which he speaks which he speaks in my name he says he put the name on his word Jesus I will require it of them. That means there will be judgment for not hearkening to his voice and the words. And that is why judgment comes when Jesus comes. It was God who spoke it unto, you know, Moses. This is how to know 
because everything he will speak will come to pass. So Jesus came, prophesied all the eschatological prophecies. Bang! And now men are just struggling in interpretation. He spoke everything. Everything. So here, in the book of 2 Corinthians chapter 3, verse 18, we are told that, but we all, with an unveiled face now, not like Moses' wood was veiled. We are beholding the mirror which contains the glory of God, which is the word of God. We are beholding means we are looking at it as in a mirror. So the word of God is compared to what? Your mirror you look into your house. So you are looking into the word of God as a mirror. But you see the glory of God in the word of God. So that when you are looking at the word of God and practicing what is written in the word, then you are being transformed. Your inner man is being transformed. Okay, your inner man is being transformed. So your inner man is being formed. Like I told you that the inner man must be Christ. So Christ be formed in you, if you remember. That the first glory is what? That Christ in you. That Christ brings himself fully in you. He raises himself fully in you. So your image becomes Christ's image. Those who are Christ are disappearing. I remember demonstrating it to you. Then he says, are transformed into the same image of Christ from one glory which he has already given us to glory which we shall be. So from glory to glory God is taking me. Do you understand? Now, so that is, that is why the word is taking me a process. And that's what I was talking about. That particular salvation or redemption is the same word, redemption, salvation. You know, people have learned one side of things. It is a process. You receive Christ now. He forms himself in you. And that's the reason why we are kept here to be taught until Christ be formed in you. Then it is the glory. So that is what the Bible says. The hope of glory is Christ in you. So if Christ is not in you, you don't, have, you don't have hope of that glory. But once Christ is in you, you have hope that that glory, you will come into the light of it. Please, am I talking to people here? Say, Christ is in me. Christ is in me. So if Christ in, is in you, then there is a hope of you becoming Christ at his appearing of your spirit, soul, Body fully intact, three persons in one. So, God's body is the Son. God's body, anytime you want to see, because God, as God, Theothis, as the deity, is invisible at all realms, including the realm of God. You go there, you don't see Him, He's invisible, He's like a light shining in His strength. And the Bible says he dwells in unapproachable light. So the, he's not even the light, but he dwells in that light. So he's higher than and brighter than the light. <laughs> he's the light that lights every man that comes to the world. <laughs> that is God. And so when you are getting closer, you burn. But hear this. God now visited men in body. So Jesus is the express body. We talk about image. Let's use body. Body of God. So he prepared this body so that he will wrap himself in the body. So that he can see men. Talk to men. Also be tempted. Know that how does it feel to become a man that I have made that I was not like. So now once he has become like a man, he's able to help them that are tempted. When you are tempted of fornication, he came to see it. He saw how beautiful when you are wrapped in the body. How the curvy women, how they look like, you know. How when they walk and when they are pompous, you know. You know. And how, do you understand? Yeah. Yeah. How they walk at work. Me, 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 me. They are sophisticated. So when men see them, the way their heart is cut up. Ah. Jesus was there. He saw Mary Madeline. Men could not have an oversight of that woman. She was extremely beautiful. She 
So the men wanted to end her life. So that when they end her life, they were lying. They, had, they were all wanted her. They all wanted her. She refused. And so the one that got her said, it was somebody's word. Husband. So they said, we will stone you to death. You refuse me. Jesus said, I have changed the rules. It's no longer the law. I'm the prophet that will come. Messenger of God. I will change it. He who is without sin cast the first stone. He saw all these people. He saw, you know, Joanna. Ah, the wife of um, um, Ch- Chusa. Like, uh, they were beautiful women. Jesus saw all these women, young lads in their ages of 18, 20 and all of that. Powerful women. Beautiful, elegance. Ah, virgins. And those of them who had married and knew how to perfume their bodies, but their husbands were gone. And, you know, he saw all of that. So today when you're a man of God and you, you have lost and you see them and you are fallen, Jesus knows how to bring you out of that temptation. Why? Because he was on earth. God in a body, on earth. He knows how to succor you out of it. He knows how to pull you out of it. He knows. So the daughters of Zion are free from oppression. They are free from oppression. That we can be sisters, brothers together without any compromise. Are you hearing me, somebody? Jesus Christ of Nazareth. No tension upon the sisters. They can develop Christ and have their own husbands if God permits. And work the work of Christ unto heaven without tension. Without having the difficulty of, oh, if I dress and I've been, my, my beauty is evaporating, the men in the church don't allow me to function. No! Jesus is able to succor, support, help them that are tempted. Why he, he was God wrapped up in the body and he put the name on it. He said, Jesus, 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 Jehovah is salvation. He walked on earth. He saw corruption. He he sympathized. He rebuked it. Took it all to the cross. And said from today when you believe in me. You believe in me. Not even the recital of your sins. Saves you. It is about just believing in Christ. Let Let me prove it to you. How would the thief. On the cross. With Jesus. He was also on the cross with Jesus. How do you reconcile your theology. Calabras. Uh, can, can I be a bit uh, uh, can I be a preacher for a bit <laughs> how, how do you reconcile your theology looking at the, the thief on the, on the cross with Jesus uh, who was stinking with, with sin the guy was crucified um, to be one of he was numbered among the three you know that's Jesus but there was the other person let's say the second person he was a thief and he was also what hanged and, and, and then he was crucified as well. And the guy was dying. Uh, some another person was insulting Jesus. Uh, you, I heard you are the savior. You have done miracles. We are dying. You, we are in the same group. Uh, you have been crucified as a thief. Me too have been crucified as a robber. That guy too is a big thief. Now we are all together. But you, if you are a savior and you are a thief too, uh, why don't you save yourself so can you can save us? If you can't save us, then you are not the one you think you are. Then the other one says, shut up. He did not do anything. We are actually receiving a just punishment. A just reward for our iniquities. Ah, We have done wrong. But this man has done nothing. He has done nothing. It's for our sake he is here. He's taking our sins. This guy just by proclaiming this. Say, Lord, I believe in you who are the Savior. If you go to your kingdom, even though I'm a thief and I'm dying for my thievery, remember me. Right there, Jesus gives the man salvation. The, the guy did not confess. He didn't rabato, rabata, rebakata. Right on the cross, Jesus saved his life. Do we have sinners? I don't care about your sins. Believe in Jesus. He died for you. I am broke. 
My Jesus died for you. It's not about theology and jargons. It's about faith in him. The guy, he did not follow any sequential order. No recitals. He didn't even know them. Just by believing that you are the son of God, you are a holy man. We are the ones who have sinned. Just remember me said tonight. Not tomorrow. Tonight. I tell you the truth. When I'm going to paradise, you are going with me. Hey! How I wish I was that thief. Salvation made simple. He's gone. The guy, right now, he's enjoying. Imagine, he said, he didn't say you shall also be in paradise. He said, you shall be with me. That means when Jesus is preaching to the people who sinned a long time ago, the guy was there, he says, I'm a witness. He has died. He is the Christ. Can you imagine that? He was holding his Bible for him. How I wish I was that thief. Hey! We have become so judgmental. But somebody was hanged unto condemnation, received his salvation right there. How would this not beat your theology? You have learned theology. You have gone to school. It's good. But sometimes, you can, you can, can you put them down and just preach deliverance, preach salvation by the believing of Christ and not by the recounting of the many sins of the people. For he died for those sins. It's, not, it's meaningless recounting your sins. Do you believe in Jesus? Period. A man is born again by believing in Christ. Simple. When he hears the gospel and he believes, he's been sealed. It's a beautiful gospel. Good news. But when you come into Christ and you are a fornicator, adulterous, a homosexual, whoever that you thought you were, once you have come into Christ and you say, I receive you, I believe. Then, he says, me, I died for you. So you live my life. So once you come, the other news is this. You are a fornicator. He says, come. Just as you are. But when you come, you don't remain just as you are. You give your life of fornication to him. He nailed it to the cross. It's a past thing. Then you begin to live his life on earth. And because you are living his life on earth, many people don't like him, they will persecute you. Because you are living his life on earth, there is a trial, you will go through them. Because when he has loved you and died for you, when you receive him, you, by believing in him and you come into him, you also start to live his life on earth. You cease to live your own life that you lived on earth as a, a murderer, as a, a, a prostitute, as, as a homosexual, as a whatever that you were. You cease to live that and you begin to live for Jesus. You live his life. That is the other news that people don't want. But it's beautiful. Just believe when you believe. After believing, he is the one who will work the work in you. Both to will and for you to do his good pleasure. I have been chastised so much for accepting vagabonds. I have been accused several times. I remember I lived with people who were rejected. Ladies. Ladies. A lot of them, they were eating in my house. They said, you sleep with all of them. I said, thank God. Because of that, we have seen dreams. You will not go anywhere. You will die here. Thanks be unto God. I still live on. It's been so many years on. I'm here. People told people, watch him. He will not last. Two years, he will just die. Seven years I'm standing here in World Wide Web platform. Don't you still believe in the mercies of God and the 
and the grace of Jesus. We have been commissioned to go out and preach this gospel. This gospel to the poor. Jesus said in the book of Deuteronomy 15, God said in the book of Deuteronomy 15 verse number 7, He says, if there is any poor among you, I want you, the brethren, to help him, support him, and give him more than enough to be able to. That's how I care. Is there? I heard the woman of God announcing, I care, I care. It's our responsibility. God said it. He said, if it happens that there's a brethren, sisters among you who is poor, he says, give him as much as they need. Don't say that the seven years of debt redemption is coming. Because in Israel, if somebody was owing you for seven years and they couldn't pay, the seven year comes, you forgive them everything they owe you. Not Christians today. And so that is the reason why we must work the works of Jesus. He said, if you love me, but you neglect the poor, the needy, the naked, what good have you done? That is why I'm saying that. If you really go into the gospel, your theology will be beaten. All these jargons is gone. Right at the cross, the guy received Jesus. What else do we look for? I pray for you by the power of the Spirit of God. We are going to go out and win the people. I remember when we went to the marketplace to do the evangelism. I was just preaching and somebody fell under the power of the Lord. Jesus was working upon his own. We didn't touch nobody. People started coming. It was though people were closing, not knowing they were listening. They were waiting. The word of God is sweet. It saved a lot of people's lives. People who were going to be blind, God saved them. Their eyes won't be blind anymore. Because we carry the gospel to the marketplace. We are obedient to the mission of God. I pray you have understanding of these things. Amen. How they work. Me, I love Jesus. I want to live the rest of my life to please him fully. If I, I did not please him well seven years, I want to please him now. Because we don't have time. Lift up and listen to we trust you've enjoyed today's broadcast. For more information, visit www.johnanochiministries.org, www.worldwidewordministries.org, or call 0302-507-154 or 0540-996-670. This broadcast is made possible by partners of John Anoche Ministries.